Uranus is a planet that has always remained in the shadow of its more famous neighbors, concealing many mysteries. What if what we know about Uranus is just a small part of a much more astonishing story? Can we afford to ignore such a strange and unusual planet? Imagine a world that rotates unlike any other, a planet lying on its side with rings resembling a coin spinning on a table. What is the secret behind this astonishing orientation? One mystery gives way to another as scientists only begin to unravel this tangle of cosmic enigmas. And finally, how can we explain that Uranus is the coldest planet, even though it's closer to the Sun than its brother Neptune? Could something be happening inside the planet that we haven't even begun to suspect? Will we ever uncover all of its secrets? Or will the planet remain one of the greatest mysteries of our solar system? If the strange and enigmatic world of Uranus has captured your imagination, don't let this journey end here. Hit that like button to show your fascination with the mysteries of the cosmos and subscribe to our channel for more captivating explorations of the solar system's most intriguing secrets. Together, we'll uncover the hidden stories of planets like Uranus, stories that challenge what we think we know about our universe. Your support helps us keep exploring Uranus is one of the most mysterious planets in the solar system. It is the seventh planet from the Sun, the third largest in diameter, and the fourth most massive. The unique characteristics of Uranus raise numerous questions for astronomers. One of its most striking features is its axis of rotation. The equatorial plane of Uranus is tilted at an angle of 97.86 degrees to its orbital plane, meaning the planet rotates retrograde lying on its side and slightly upside down. This unusual orientation presents a challenge to scientists who seek to explain what could have caused such a significant tilt in its rotational axis. The leading hypothesis to explain Uranus's tilted axis suggests that billions of years ago, a massive object, roughly twice the size of Earth, collided with the planet. This impact caused its current orientation and had a major influence on its formation. During solstices, one of the planet's poles is pointed directly at the Sun, and only a small region near the equator experiences rapid alternations between day and night, where the Sun stays very low on the horizon, similar to Earth's polar regions. Halfway through Uranus's year, the situation reverses, and the opposite pole is bathed in a polar day. Each of Uranus's poles spends 42 Earth years either in complete darkness or in constant sunlight. However, during the equinoxes, the Sun aligns with Uranus's equator, and at that time, day and night cycles become more typical, resembling those on other planets. The last equinox on Uranus occurred on December 7, 2007. An alternative explanation suggests that Uranus once had a large moon, which exerted gravitational influence on the planet as it moved away, tilting the planet's axis. How was this planet discovered, and how did its discovery change our understanding of the solar system? The history of the discovery of Uranus is a key moment in astronomy, as it was the first planet discovered with a telescope rather than known since ancient times. Although Uranus can be seen with the naked eye under ideal conditions, its slow movement across the sky was not sufficiently noticeable for ancient astronomers to identify it as a planet. Uranus was first recorded in 1690 by John Flamsteed, who mistakenly identified it as Star 34 in the constellation Taurus. The French astronomer Pierre Charles Le Monnier also observed Uranus 12 times between 1750 and 1769, but did not realize it was a new planet, mistakenly considering it an ordinary star. Uranus was truly recognized as a planet in 1781 when William Herschel was involved in the observation of the parallax of stars using a telescope of his own design. On March 13, 1781, he first observed this planet from the garden of his home at 19 New King Street, making the following entry in his journal. In the quadrant near Zeta Tauri, either a nebulous star or possibly a comet. On March 17th, another journal entry noted, I was looking for a comet or nebulous star, and it turned out to be a comet as it changed position. On March 22nd, a letter from Herschel to Sir William Watson was read at the Royal Society for the first time. In subsequent letters sent on March 29th, 
April 5th, and April 26th, Herschel continued to discuss his discovery of the comet, comparing it to the planets. On April 23rd, Herschel received a response from the astronomer royal, Neville Maskelyne, who remarked, I don't know how to name it. It could be either a planet revolving around the sun in a circular orbit or a comet moving in an elongated ellipse. So far, I have not noticed either a head or a cometary tail. While Herschel was still cautiously describing the object as a comet, other astronomers suspected it was some other kind of object. The Russian astronomer Andrei Ivanovich Lexel established that the distance from the Earth to the object exceeded the distance from the Earth to the Sun. The Berlin astronomer Johann Bode described the object as a moving star resembling a planet orbiting outside Saturn's orbit and suggested that its orbit resembled a planetary rather than a cometary one. It soon became evident that the object was indeed a planet. In 1783, Herschel reported the recognition of this fact to the president of the Royal Society, Joseph Banks. For his merits, Herschel was awarded a lifetime stipend of £200 by King George III, provided he moved to Windsor so that the royal family could observe through his telescopes. The discovery of Uranus was a turning point in the history of astronomy, as it expanded the boundaries of the known solar system and marked the beginning of a new era of planetary discoveries that continued to change our understanding of the cosmos. The discovery of Uranus in 1781 radically changed our perception of the solar system, not only by adding a new planet but also by significantly expanding its visible boundaries. Until that moment, astronomers considered the boundary of the solar system to end at Saturn, the furthest known planet. However, with the discovery of Uranus, the size of the solar system in their minds nearly doubled. Uranus is located almost twice as far from the Sun as Saturn at a distance of about 2.87 billion kilometers. This was a revolutionary discovery as it showed that the solar system could be much larger than previously thought, prompting astronomers to search for new, even more distant objects. This expansion of the solar system's boundaries had far-reaching consequences. Firstly, it changed the methods of exploring space. Astronomers realized that using more powerful telescopes could lead to the discovery of new planets and objects beyond the visible spectrum. The discovery of Uranus spurred the development of telescopic techniques and theoretical models for the motion of celestial bodies. Secondly, this discovery led to a reassessment of many scientific theories about the structure and dynamics of the solar system, which later helped predict the discovery of Neptune in 1846. However, despite this expansion, the study of Uranus was limited for a long time to ground-based observations. Only one mission, the Voyager 2 spacecraft, flew past Uranus in 1986, providing the first and only close-up images of the planet. Its instruments recorded that the atmosphere of the ice giant is composed of about 85% hydrogen and 15% helium. The spacecraft also discovered rings around Uranus, the presence of a magnetic field, and it identified 10 new moons of the planet. An important aspect for understanding the nature of Uranus is also its ring system. The system of rings and moons of Uranus represents an important and poorly understood part of this enigmatic planet. Although Uranus's rings are not as bright and prominent as Saturn's, they possess unique dynamics and structures. The rings were discovered on March 10, 1977, by James Elliott, Edward Dunham, and Douglas Mink. As of 2008, 13 narrow rings are known, with the minimum radius belonging to the 1986 U2RZ ring, 38,000 kilometers, and the maximum belonging to the Mu ring, about 98,000 kilometers. Weak dust formations and open arcs may exist in the gaps between the main rings. The rings are very dark, their bond albedo does not exceed 2%, indicating the extremely low reflectivity of the particles that compose them. They are believed to consist of water ice with organic matter inclusions. Most of Uranus's rings are opaque and have a width of only a few kilometers. The ring system contains little dust and is primarily made up of large objects ranging from 20 centimeters to 20 m in diameter. However, some rings, such as 1986U2RZ, Mu and Nu, contain small dust particles, unlike the narrow dim ring Lambda, which is dominated by larger bodies. 
The small amount of dust in the rings is explained by aerodynamic drag created by Uranus's extensive exosphere, known as its corona. The age of Uranus's rings is believed to be no more than 600 million years. They likely formed as a result of collisions of moons that once orbited the planet. These moons gradually disintegrated into smaller particles, which concentrated in zones of maximum gravitational stability, forming the rings. The mechanism that keeps the narrow rings within stable boundaries is not yet fully understood. It was initially assumed that each narrow ring is supported by a pair of shepherd moons. But in 1986, the Voyager 2 spacecraft discovered only one such pair, Cordelia and Ophelia, surrounding the brightest ring, Epsilon. One of the mysteries is how the rings maintain their stability despite such changes. How do you think this is possible? Scientists suggest that this may be related to the gravitational influence of Uranus's numerous moons, which help keep the rings in their current state. These moons themselves represent an area of interest for researchers. As of 2024, Uranus has 28 moons, many of which may hide oceans of liquid water beneath their icy surfaces, potentially increasing the chances of life. Among Uranus's moons, special attention is drawn to the five largest, Miranda, Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, and Oberon. These celestial bodies stand out for their uniqueness and importance in the study of Uranus's planetary system. Each has a sufficiently massive structure to take on a spherical shape due to hydrostatic equilibrium. Four of these moons show signs of both internal and external activity, manifested in the form of canyon formation and possibly volcanic activity. The largest of these moons, Titania, has a diameter of 1,578 kilometers, making it the eighth largest moon in the solar system. Despite its size, it is 20 times less massive than the moon. It is interesting to note that Uranus's moon system is the least massive among all gas giant planets. The total mass of the five largest moons does not even reach half of the mass of Triton, Neptune's moon, which ranks seventh in size in the solar system. Their sizes range from 472 kilometers, Miranda, to 1,578 kilometers, Titania. All of them are relatively dark objects, with geometric albedo ranging from 30% to 50%, and bond albedo from 10% to 23%. Umbriel is the darkest of them, while Ariel is the brightest. The composition of Uranus's largest moons includes a mixture of roughly equal parts ice and rock, except for Miranda, which is primarily composed of ice. Among the possible ice components are ammonia and carbon dioxide. The internal structure of these moons suggests the presence of a rocky core surrounded by an icy shell. In particular, Titania and Oberon may have a subsurface ocean of liquid water at the boundary between the core and mantle. While our knowledge of Uranus's internal structure is limited, only a comprehensive mission with a probe capable of penetrating the planet's atmosphere and measuring its composition and structure will provide answers to many of these questions. What secret does the mysterious magnetic field of Uranus hide, and what have we uncovered from its unpredictable behavior? The magnetic field of Uranus is one of the most mysterious features of this planet, setting it apart from other objects in the solar system. When Voyager 2 flew past Uranus, it recorded an unusual magnetic field that was not only offset from the planet's rotation axis, but also exhibited a complex, asymmetrical structure. A unique aspect is that the axis of Uranus's magnetic field is tilted 59 degrees from the planet's rotation axis, making it the most tilted among all known planets in the solar system. This deviation results in a highly unstable magnetic field, with a unique interaction with the solar wind. Such an orientation of the magnetic field raises numerous questions for scientists. One of these is the source of this field. On other planets, such as Earth or Jupiter, the magnetic field is generated by the movement of liquid metal in the planet's core, which creates a dynamo effect. However, for Uranus, this mechanism remains unclear. There is a hypothesis that Uranus's magnetic field may be related not to its core, but to its outer shell where high pressures and temperatures lead to the formation of unusual states of matter, such as superionic water, a form of water where oxygen forms a crystalline lattice while hydrogen moves freely through it. 
Another notable feature is the unevenness of Uranus's magnetic field. While the magnetic fields of Earth and other planets are relatively symmetrical, Uranus's is distorted and offset, creating very complex magnetic structures. This leads to unpredictable changes in field intensity across various regions of the planet, making the study of its magnetosphere a priority for future missions. Furthermore, since Voyager 2 only made a brief flyby, the question remains of how stable this magnetic field is and whether it has changed over the decades since the spacecraft's visit. Despite its unique magnetic field, the temperature characteristics of Uranus remain another significant mystery. Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system, which is surprising given its position relative to the Sun. Although Uranus is closer to the Sun than Neptune, its temperature is lower. Uranus has recorded minimum temperatures of up to minus 224 degrees Celsius, making it colder than the more distant Neptune. This fact raises many questions for scientists about the mechanisms of the planet's internal and external cooling. On other gas giants, such as Jupiter and Saturn, internal heat is generated due to the process of gravitational compression, creating a constant source of heat. However, Uranus does not exhibit such internal heating. The reasons for this remain a subject of active scientific debate. One hypothesis suggests that a possible significant collision during the planet's early formation could have disrupted its internal processes that promote heat production. This collision, which likely also explains Uranus's unusual axial tilt, may have dissipated a considerable amount of internal heat, leaving the planet relatively cold. Additionally, the structure of Uranus's interior likely influences its temperature characteristics. Uranus is classified as an ice giant, meaning its composition includes large volumes of ices, water, ammonia and methane at high pressures and low temperatures. These substances, located deep within the planet, may effectively block the transfer of heat to the outer layers, contributing to the maintenance of a cold atmosphere. Another interesting feature is the presence of winds and storms on Uranus, which, although not as intense as those on Jupiter or Neptune, still exist. Observations of the planet show that wind speeds can reach up to 900 km per h. Since Uranus lacks significant sources of internal heat, it remains a mystery what the primary mechanism behind these atmospheric phenomena is. These temperature anomalies and mysterious atmospheric processes on Uranus undoubtedly require further investigation. But beyond the internal structure, one of the most mysterious topics remains the chemical composition of Uranus. The chemical composition of Uranus is a key mystery awaiting resolution by scientists. It is known that Uranus's atmosphere is rich in methane, which absorbs red light, giving the planet its characteristic bluish hue. However, what happens in the depths of the atmosphere and in the deeper layers remains unknown. Exciting discoveries related to Uranus may be on the horizon. Currently, NASA is developing the concept for the Uranus Orbiter and Probe mission, which would send an orbiter and an atmospheric probe to Uranus. The optimal launch date for this mission is projected for 2031 to 2032, as it would reach Uranus by 2044. However, these plans may be hindered by funding issues and a shortage of plutonium-238, which is required for powering the spacecraft. China also has a mission planned for Uranus, involving a 100-kilogram probe that is expected to be launched alongside the Tianwen-4 spacecraft in 2030. This probe is set to fly by Uranus in 2036. Considering all of the above, those who dream of seeing Uranus again will need to be patient and in good health. One can only hope that the work on this new mission to the coldest planet will be successfully completed. There is no doubt that Uranus holds many secrets and surprises just waiting to be discovered. Subscribe to the channel and stay updated. There are many more amazing discoveries and stories about the most mysterious corners of our universe ahead.